I'd now like to invite His Holiness, His Eminence, Cardinal Oswald Gracias, Archbishop of Mumbai, Bombay, President of Catholic Bishops Conference of India, and member of the eight-member advisory council appointed by His Holiness Pope Francis to please address us now. Cardinal Gracias. Thank you so much for this invitation to speak over here. And we've had this beautiful, inspiring address from Dr. Kadri, inspiring and really setting the tone for all our discussions and our reflections. For me, it's a matter of great joy to be part of this movement, this revolution of peace, to promote peace and to bring peace in the world. We are just finishing, in the Christian tradition, Christmas. The Christmas season is getting over. And as Kadri Saab said, in the Gospel it said, Peace I give you, my peace I leave you. When Jesus was born at Christmas, the angels sang on high, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to all people of goodwill. Jesus came to bring peace in the world. He founded his disciples, a group of disciples, and every religion comes to give peace in the world. Jesus came, continues to teach us the message of love. Peace is not just the absence of war, the absence of conflict, the absence of hostility. Peace, I think, I know, I feel, I hope you do agree with me, is really something positive. Peace is, first of all, the presence of God in us. It's an effect of the presence of God in us. But peace comes out of a good relationship with everybody, with brothers and sisters, with nature, and with God. Only then there can be peace. Peace comes from feeling that everybody is my brother and sister. Peace comes from understanding that nature is not something which is a property to be usurped, but again for the common good. Peace comes from the consciousness that our creator in heaven is the creator of all of us. That is really the meaning of peace. Peace has got to be created. It's not something that would come naturally. And therefore, it is a commitment to us, it's a responsibility to us, to each one, to work towards the creation of peace, to work towards the creation of the right relationship towards others, nature, and God. This comes because of a commitment that we have. We are here religious leaders, members of civil society. It's a responsibility, I would think, of everybody. Political leaders also, members of civil society. Every single individual has to contribute to peace, otherwise peace cannot become a reality. We, you and I, have a responsibility because of our great desire for this movement. And I want to pay, asking an excuse, Tribute to my brother Kulkarni Sudinder, a man of vision, a man of commitment, a man of generosity, and a man who is self-sacrificing for this movement. And that's why we have been assembled together. Somebody has got to be the catalyst to bring like-thinking like people together, and Sudinder has been this catalyst. Love means really selflessness. This is really the essence of our relationship. We experience it in a family, where the parents, husband and wife, love each other. They make sacrifices for each other. Parents make sacrifices for the children. Children sacrifices for the parents. It comes naturally. It doesn't come as a part of a commandment, but because that's a feeling which arises. And how can this feeling become part of our nature is the question that we must ask and how we can bring it in the nature of people so that love becomes 
completely a second nature to us, something which we take for granted. We have witnessed too much in our society of violence, hostility, of animosity, of lack of tolerance. I would think that tolerance, that uh, peace, is not just mere tolerance. It's much more than tolerance. It is acceptance, total acceptance, which then leads to also love, which means sacrificing oneself for the other. It means working for the good of the other. It means not working only for myself. In a family, the sufferings of one are the sufferings of all. Successes of one are the successes of all. The joys of one are the joys of all, and the sorrows of one are the sorrows of all. Can that not be brought into society? We have divisions based on, unfortunately, nationality, where nations fighting with each other for different things. We have differences, very, very unfortunately, based on religion. When we look at religion, I cannot understand, and I think you will agree, we've got so very, very, very much in common and so few differences. Why must we not focus on what we have in common, build on that, and create a new society? That is a challenge, I think, to each one of us. A challenge to the religious leaders, a challenge also to all of those who work with us to be able to create a new society. Religion, religious leaders, God never intended us to fight with each other on how we worship and how we pray Him, pray to Him and how we adore Him. He wanted us always to be one family and He wants us to be one family. How I think we, disciples of different religions, followers of different religions, have hijacked, I'm borrowing a word used by my brother Kadri, have hijacked the principal religion to make divisions where there was supposed to be unity. And this is something I think that we must strongly combat, fight against, never, never, never allow it to be a force of division. I do think that we in Asia have got a privileged position because very many religions began in Asia, founders were born here. Privileged position also because Asians by nature, I think, are religious. Religion, God, is an important factor. There is globalization and influences from all over causing secularization, materialism, relativism. But we must preserve our Asianness, our Asian culture, preserve our religious nature, religious importance. How inspiring for me it is to see when there is a religious function, tens of thousands of streets of Mumbai going to a temple to pray, going gathering together in a mosque, going to a church, going to a Gurdwara. That is not seen in many parts of the world. It is there in India, there in my, our own city of Mumbai, in India. It is there it's because the Asia has got this spiritual element in its blood, in its veins. And this has got to be preserved. Globalization is taking away much of our Asianness, and this we must protect jealously so that we are able to retain our spiritual heritage and use the spiritual heritage to be able to contribute to peace. I am so happy in this document uh, it's very rare when we get documents to study that you don't find something you think you would want to improve. But I confess I can't find anything over here which I would want to change. I agree with every single word, every single sentiment over here. Uh, I'm so also happy that the environment in a particular way, which has been a forgotten element, has been also inserted here. Our relationship with nature. I was interacting with members of the Intergovernmental uh, Panel for Climate Change, which the European community has uh, have organized and have mandated to work on this. 
And I realize from the data they have given us that we in the city of Mumbai are really facing not only damage but destruction. If climate change carries on at the present pace, they told us that most of Mumbai will be underwater in the year 2050. So this, this, this very hall that we are sitting in will be underwater in 2050 if climate change carries on at a normal pace. But we are not conscious. We are abusing nature. We are exploiting nature. And I think that we are stealing from future generations what belongs to them by our exploitation and irresponsibility. That's why I'm so happy that this element also has been brought over here. Above all, we must continuously remove the barriers that uh, may bring divisions between us. Above all, we must essentially create love. We in Mumbai, the city of Mumbai, so happy we have our, the head of our police force over here, we in Mumbai have had much more than our share of violence and terrorism compared probably to any other city in the world. We have suffered a lot. But this should never make us discouraged. We, we are a re resilient community, a resilient people, and that we must struggle and fight and combat the evil of hatred, animosity, prejudice, take it away completely. All of us are brothers and sisters, no matter what our religion, no matter what our nationality, no matter what our ethnic background. I said that we have got a great religious tradition in India. We also, unfortunately, very often allow small pettinesses to divide us, and that we must get rid of. I want to end my reflections with a story, like my brother Kulkani did. Uh, I read it from a uh, Christian writer, Tony DeMello, but he, in his book, says he took it from the scriptures of other religions, and so forth. It is uh, you must have heard of it before, but it makes an impact and tells us what we should do. He says, the guru was teaching his disciples in the form of questions and answers. And he asked, told them, uh, you want to ask any questions, any clarifications about your life? And uh, one disciple asked the master, asked the guru, uh, Guruji, can you tell us when is it that night ends and day begins. What particular point? Uh, and said, no, so you, you answer me. And one disciple said, night ends and day begins when I can see in the distance horizon the first rays of the sunlight. And the master said, not correct. And then said, another one said, uh, night ends and day begins when I can look in the horizon and distinguish the movement of the trees and the movement of the animals. And the master said, not correct. He said, then you tell us. You know, you are so wise, you know everything you tell me. Tell us, when is it that night ends and day begins? When is it darkness ends and light begins? And the master said, night ends and day begins. Darkness ends and light begins. When you can look around you, and see in the faces of people around you, your brother and your sister. Until then, you are still in darkness. Until then, for you, the darkness has not yet ended. I'm sure that each of us will try that the darkness ends in our own lives and help others also to eliminate the darkness. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you.